Sometimes intros are actually very hard. Like today, I wanna to tell you about three things we're gonna be talking about today and I'm trying to pick a tone or an energy to carry through this intro as I tell you everything that's coming up. But all the stories have way different tones. So I'm just gonna not make it flat today and I'm just gonna give each story headline the kind of energy it deserves. Are you ready? The DA begged America to get involved in South Africa's elections. Jacob Zuma's MK party threatened to start a civil war. And breaking news this week, we have a brand new entrant into Uya Luta 99. <laughs> See, horrible. Couldn't, couldn't work together, couldn't do it. This is the issue with Dan Corder because South Africa is a movie. Welcome to the watch party. Listen, we're going to get to all that other stuff I just told you about in just a second. But the only news really worth knowing this week is that Amabaka near thrashed Kaiser Chiefs and once again confirmed that there is only one true Soweto giant. Right, let's get into the other biggest stories of the past week. And Papa says subscribe. Right, Papa says Papa says Right, Papa says Papa says Mm. Papa sub right, Papa says subscribe if you're feeling generous. Let's get into... I never thought the Democratic Alliance and the Mkonto Wesizwe party would agree on anything. But remarkably, in the last seven days, they have both, in their own ways, undermined our electoral system and thrown doubt over the Independent Electoral Commission. Let's do the silly before the scary. The Democratic Alliance has the mental faculties of an ostrich and the charisma of six day old pup at the moment. But even for them, a party with fewer wins than Kaiser Chiefs, what they did a few days ago just seems dumb. The DA published a letter that they'd sent to the United States of America, specifically Secretary of State Antony Blinken, in which, and this is true, they begged the US to get involved in South Africa's election. They basically said that because there's a chance that the ANC will drop below 50% in this coming election, that the ANC might try to meddle with the IEC and interfere with the results of our elections. And the DA begged for America's attention with no evidence whatsoever that the IEC was compromised or that the ANC or anybody else was trying to tamper with the results of the elections. No evidence. This is really just so insane. The DA begged the United States of America, the Jan 6th United States of America, the we haven't been able to prosecute our president for calling for an insurrection against our own state, the United States of America, the multiple cases and evidence and examples of voter suppression. The DA begged that United States of America to come and watch our elections. That's like asking a dealer to stand at your club door and check for drugs. And incredibly, the DA thought that we as a country would like that, that we would like them for doing that. That's why they published this letter for everybody to read. The DA's letter made us as a country feel embarrassed that the DA is from South Africa. South Africa, by the way, has an impeccable track record of free and fair elections. And yet the DA provided absolutely no evidence that this might be happening. They they showed us nothing. They had no receipts to show that the IEC might be compromised or somebody, anybody, might be trying to undermine our electoral process. And it just breaks my brain trying to figure out what the DA was trying to do here. Like, who were they trying to appeal to? Which voters? There are so few, so few fringe, fringe conspiracy theorists in South Africa who genuinely believe that our election is being undermined and they have no evidence. And if they're trying to appeal to them, look at everyone else they've alienated. They're a laughing stock again. Although maybe the joke's on me for expecting better because this is the political party whose leader at their huge rally for the 2024 election debuted a new catchphrase. Dabula in Yanga! Dabula in Yanga! Dabula in Yanga! which had a very unfortunate double meaning. You see, Dubula Nyanga in Kosa can mean a moonshot or shoot for the moon, but Dubula Nyanga in Isizulu means shoot the traditional healer. So I guess a party whose leadership could be so all over the place that they didn't bother to check their grand new slogan line in every common South African language, maybe this is actually, maybe this is actually par for the course. Right, now let's do the scary. A prominent member of the Mkonto Wesizwe party went on a microphone on stage at a rally a few days ago and threatened This country will be turned into civil war! Yeah! The day that MK is not allowed 
Now that's about a few things. Firstly, the ANC has taken the MK party to court because they believe that the MK party is infringed on copyright by using the name of where and the logo, which the ANC believes historically it is clear is their own, but also because the ANC believes that MK irregularly registered. And there has been quite a lot of panic in the media and around the MK party about whether or not they properly did register in the first place and the IEC is following its legally binding due process to figure out whether or not MK has legitimately registered as a party. So that's what's happening. The IEC is doing its job and the courts are doing their jobs. But the MK party has now tried to turn this into like some evil deep state machine that has decided to thwart the MK party and deny the will of the people and kick MK off the ballots. And then one of their leaders, Visvan Reddy, stood up and threatened civil war and specifically used the word riots. And that's an extremely loaded term when the MK party is speaking because Jacob Zuma's arrest in 2021 led to those devastating, awful riots where hundreds of people were killed and thousands of people lost their businesses. Of course, later on, many people took advantage of the opportunity provided by chaos to loot, to take what they could. But initially, all of that almost instant violence and destruction was planned. And of course, some low level chaos creators have been put on trial, but the big people who would be able to coordinate something like this, they're nowhere to be seen. And the South African state either has no interest or no ability in bringing these people to justice. And although no link back to Zuma has been proven, that sure is a hell of a coincidence if it had nothing to do with him. So when an MK leader says that there will be riots, there will be civil war, that is a threat. And that is a threat that has to be taken very, very seriously. Unfortunately, the South African government did not even take the mass destruction and death of the July 2021 riots seriously in the first place, which is why we are now still in this limbo of what happened in July 2021 and what could possibly happen again. We just don't know. This threat carries a real weight to it and there might be bite behind this bark. And then, incredibly, the MK party had the nerve to accuse the DA of committing a treasonous act. MK came out with no irony whatsoever and said that the DA asking America to get involved in watching our elections was treasonous after just threatening the country, threatening our democratic system. And finally, on the issue today, welcome back to our hit corruption game show. Uya Luta 99! Hello, hello, Aluta Continue to you studio audience and you at home Aluta Continua. It's a big th week this week because we have the first Aluted alleged corruption leaderboard contestant dropping off of the chart. But first we have a brand new entrant to our alleged corruption leaderboard. Please crowd give it up for South African Football Association President Danny Yordan. Well then Danny come down onto the stage. Wow. Yes Danny Yordan's officers were raided the other day accused of looting an alleged one 1.3 million rand from SAFA coffers between 2014 and 2018. Yes, this number might grow because they're only starting with the backdated numbers. That puts Danny O'Don in at number four on our alleged corruption leaderboard for Uya Luta 99. <laughs> Danny O'Don, of course, most well known for such famous acts as not wanting to pay Banyana Banyana bonuses. But now I think everybody needs to chill out. Now that we know this, that he was working to a good cause. He didn't want to pay bonuses because he was amassing his millions to get on the alleged corruption leaderboard. I mean, really, hasn't he saw offered enough. But we have huge developments here because the tribe has spoken, the people have been talking and the big time looters are saying that it's embarrassing, kind of, to be on a looter leaderboard with somebody who's not even broken the 1 million. It's like Tula, baby, what are you doing? I know when we started the show, you were in the top three because it was the first show. There were only three. But now that Danny's here, the rest of them don't want to sit with you. You're small fry your baby games. And so without further ado, a brand new rule to Oya Luta 99, to those alleged looters out there, if you wanna make our chart and make a big name for yourself on the alleged corruption leaderboard, you've got to break at least seven figures. Bye-bye, Tula. <laughs> 
So that's it on News Worth Knowing on the issue with Dan Corder for this week. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be back on Monday. Check out our Patreon. Check out our podcasts. Have a beautiful week.